Jacobs, and uh, my character is Jacob Goodnight, and we're here to talk about Seeing Evil 2. I'm Daniel Harris. I'm in the same movie that he's in, <laughs> and uh, I play Amy. Uh, my name is Kai Eric Erickson. I am also in See No Evil 2, and I play Seth. We're a team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new threesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us, uh, have you seen uh, Seeing No Evil, the first one, and uh, tell us what, if you have seen it, uh, what you were preparing yourself for this uh, project? Well, uh, I was in the first movie, so I saw it all the way through, from, <laughs> of course, uh, from con almost conception to the time it's finished. Um, this this one's a little different, you know, because uh, at the end of Seeing No Evil 1, my character dies pretty horrific death, of course. So my big concern, uh, logically, is uh, how does he come back, you know, um, which I, I think they, I think we did a good job of doing. And uh, also, how do we set this movie apart from, you know, even though it's in the slasher genre, how do we make it something a little different, you know, and uh, make it something more than that? Um, so I think we accomplished that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, saw Kane uh, rip people apart in the first one, uh, so I thought, oh my god, he's gonna, he's gonna kill me or not kill me. I don't know. I'm not giving away any spoilers. So, um, but I knew I was gonna, uh, he's gonna give me a run for my money. Um, I can, I can hold up a fight, but yeah, she's good tough. God. <laughs> uh, so I think it's, uh, it's, it, it feels cinematically different than the first one. Um, and doing a lot of horror movies that I've done, uh, this is, is different and we were talking about earlier, yeah. you care about the characters and for the first time, usually you want them to die, you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> you're a slut, die, but not so much in this one. Even though they're sluts, they're still fun. <laughs> Wait, we were? <laughs> I'm not talking about me. Oh. Well, you, you can claim that if you want. Well, that was the angle I was going for, actually, <laughs> when, yeah. Um, it, you know, I, I think, uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty kick-ass, actually. Yeah. Um, I did see the first one. I, I saw it uh, to prep for the second one, although I should have seen it earlier because I have a friend in it. Um, bad friend. I'm a bad, bad friend. Um, but it, it, it does have a different tone to it. Um, what's nice about it is I think you, you don't have to have seen the, you won't have to have seen the first one to kind of jump into yeah. the second. Um, cinematically, it does have a different tone, and uh, the twins really made a point of the character development, really sort of focusing on you getting to know the characters so that when they do die off, you're not just like, oh, whatever. You know, you have an attachment, you're gonna be sad when they, when they get off. So, yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it turned out fantastically. And it's nice to be in a movie where the killer actually has a story. You know, yeah. I don't think that that's very common. Usually it's like, oh, the guy that you, nobody knows why he does what he does. So, yeah. it kind of makes him a human being, which is really creepy. I think this has elements, um, you know, there's other elements as well. There's, there's a bit of humor to mm -hmm. light things up as much as you can, which mm -hmm. of course um, creates much more of a contrast. And it's also a lot of action. There's, there's some pretty good fight scenes in it, which you may not normally see in this type of movie. So I, I think it really does have some different things to offer, uh, and especially compared to the first, the, uh, first incarnation. Good kills, interesting kills. Once it goes, it's just a kind of a ride. Like once it picks up, it just doesn't really stop until the very end, which is fun. How's it like working with the Salska sisters? Awesome. <laughs> they keep on okay. <laughs> they keep on saying, don't tell everybody we're really nice. <laughs> you know, uh, I was, I was, earlier today, it was, you know, I was on the radio and the, uh, the guy was like, the notorious Salska twins. I'm like, actually, they're sweethearts. And, you know, I was like, they're going to kill me for saying that. But they're, they're really great. Uh, I think they understand the art of filmmaking very much like you know they would they would actually be explaining a scene to me and telling me how they conceived it and where they came up with the idea for it and how it's executed and how they sort of stolen that from someone else who you know showed how to do this yeah. um, so and they're really great and the rapport that they had with the uh, the cast and the crew was awesome everybody really got along very well so I just have absolutely nothing but really great things to say about that. And they're yeah. uber geeks too. Yeah. So it's nice to have directors that actually know horror movies, make a horror movie, and being females is pretty awesome too because there's so few of them out there. Uh, and it was funny because we'd ask them a, a question if we, you know, what, 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 so what do I, I don't get this or where does that come from or how do I do this? And they'd go, 
did you ever see, and it was always a reference yeah. about some obscure yeah. horror movie that I'd never, well, it's this French film from 1954, yeah. and you're like, ah, Sylvia, I have no idea what you're talking They've about. They've seen <laughs> every horror film ever made. Yeah. You can yeah. it. Like, they live and breathe it. Yeah. And so they'll give you these references, and yeah, you're like, no, no idea. describe it to me. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll do that. But uh, yeah, they've got a unique way of, uh, of directing too. And everyone says, well, is that overwhelming having like the two of them? But really only one speaks to you at a time. So you don't get like all right. flustered. So you, you get one clear sort of direction instead of getting overwhelmed with, with too much. And yeah, it, it's pretty wild because yeah. it's the old, the old deal like where they finish each other's sentences. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing when they're yeah. directing. Like one person's like, one's behind the camera and it's almost like they have ESP and they're telling the one on set what to tell people to do without actually saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, 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 was, uh, it was pretty wild, pretty unique, but very like super, super efficient, very effective, yeah. I thought. And then they'll do stuff that they don't tell you about. Uh, and Catherine Isabel and I had a scene where we were going down this corridor and you're supposed to come around. You remember this? You yeah. came around the end. And we shot it a few times and it, you know, it was working okay, but unbeknownst to Katie and me, they went and told you, just start running at them. Yeah, actually catch them. And, and try to like try to catch them. And we didn't expect the speed. I mean, he's fast. And we didn't expect this. And so like, you know, we're coming down the hall and we see him and we're like, ah! And then we're supposed to sort of run, and, and but he just starts booking it at us, and we went flying. <laughs> yeah, he's not like, stopping. Yeah, my, my little legs are going like this, and you take like three strides, and you're already caught up to us. But that, uh, I think they ended up using that take in it, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, really cool. yeah. Um, this is a question specifically for you, King. Uh, can you just say really briefly the difference between the Hitchcock and the Nightmare on Elm Street in the ring versus sure. acting for a feature film? Tell us. Sure. The, the big difference, of course, is in WWE, we have a live audience that we interact with. So it makes it completely different because we're in a very uh, adrenaline-driven, high energy, lots of excitement. Um, we have instant gratification because um, our fans, as I said, interact with us. So if we're not doing something right, we can sort of know that. Uh, if we are, do some, are doing something right, we know that as well. And also, uh, we do mostly live TV, so everything is one take, and if you get it, you get it, and if you don't, well, tough luck. And it's completely different, of course, on a sound stage, where everything comes from the inside, and it doesn't come from out there. Uh, and it's very antiseptic, and no matter how you might try, you know, that, that's just the way that it is. Anybody that's ever been on a sound stage realizes, you know, before, you actually roll the cameras, there's all this set up, and like if you're doing a stunt, they actually have to make sure that the stunt's safe, and you have to get with the different people, and you have to do makeup checks and all, well, that's not really conducive to all of a sudden, you know, going out there and, and running around and, and portraying lots of energy. So in that respect, um, the, uh, the little acting I've done, I have a great deal of respect for actors who are good, because that's hard to do. You know, in WWE, we're able to feed off of our audience, and it's completely different in, in the movies. So, despite the fact that they're both, um, you know, they're they're both acting and they both um, take in, you know, a form of theatrics. Um, I, I think the movie's a lot harder. You know, I really do. And so, in movies like this, uh, the characters who are running away traditionally make horrible decisions, <laughs> having <laughs> sex at ridiculous times or spinning up. To search a dark area. Mm -hmm. How do your characters deal with being chased by a, a maniac? Well, and that was one of the things I liked about this film too. I mean, it doesn't fit the typical mold of, of like horror films. Mm -hmm. So when we, you know, if, if people are splitting up and, and when these things go the way they do, there's usually a good explanation. Like it's not just left to like, oh yeah, they they're just splitting up. They go and try and find the exit. Like there's a good concise plan as to why they do what they do. And the twins sort of made a real good point about making sure all of that fit together. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still like the, the typical elements that you need in a horror movie, yeah. like you, you have to have that, um, but, uh, but, I, but I think it's, it's smarter. There's a reason for it, mm -hmm. uh, like Kai was saying, there's a reason why certain things happen in the movie, it's not just sort of an aimless, well, they were in the wrong place the wrong time, I mean, that happens too, but, uh, but I, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're smarter. <laughs> I will say, Amy's yeah. pretty, you know, I kind of am, am sort of the one that's trying to keep everything together and uh, and, and sort of help everybody, but I, I can't really control uh, all of it, you mm -hmm. know, especially when every time you turn around, I don't know where he is. 
So uh, and the lighting is just what I thought was so cool about the about the script was the the, the change and in, mm. in, in what it how it looks. I mean, it looks beautiful and creepy. When I read the script, and I went, the whole movie is going to take place in the dark. Wait, the lights go out. Well, how are they going to see us? That whole scene and that, that you that, lit because we you had. I would lit most of the movie. I need yeah. like lighting credit. We did self lighting <laughs> yeah, for that, for that I mean, one it's scene. It's all yeah. kind of done, which is really, really different. You know, it's not your typical, oh, you're shooting a car scene. And as the viewer, you go, oh, and you're shooting the lights underneath the dashboard. Yeah, it looks stupid. You know, so I, I think that all of that's gone in this movie. So it's all practical, which is really cool. More real. Yeah. I want to hear more about the action. It's <laughs> <laughs> a horror film. What kind of action are you? T is it like victims fighting back? That yes. sort of thing? That's really exciting. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like now we want to see the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> no, it, no, it is. I mean, uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's a couple. Uh, we have a couple pretty good fight scenes between the two of you. Yeah. And he's a lot bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Mostly him not doing very well, but nevertheless. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. He does okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's not just like a, you know people just getting crushed and that's the end of it. You know, they, they do what people do. They actually would, you know, try to fight back, especially, you know, uh, Kai's character is very much, at one point he's finally had it. That's enough, you know, and he's going to go kick Jacob's butt, which or that's one of the not really smart decisions. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's different. Yeah. You know, you don't normally see that. There's so like no cool. hanging yeah. around. You know, it's like yeah. the moment that we know that shit's going to hit the fan, we're all mm -hmm. Trying to run for our lives, literally. Yeah. So I just, you know, don't know what door, if, what door he's hiding behind, basically. Yeah. Are there some interesting surprises, interesting twists? Because usually they have like one or two interesting twists. Like, whoa, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, you can't tell us. Just ones we can't, can't tell you. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah but there is one I think it's gonna, it's gonna. Uh, if it doesn't shock people, they're certainly gonna be surprised. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you were nervous, worried, disgusted about uh, doing, or that you thought you maybe you shouldn't do or wouldn't do? In what way? To the, like, if, I don't know, like if we can imagine something like, uh, you have to pretend for all day or some day to, I don't know, crush an animal. Or like a child, you know what I mean? Like something where you go, oh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. Uh, no, we didn't have any children or animals. No. So, you know, they'll crush uh, anything but children and animals. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, no, there, there's some, yeah, there's some, you know, pretty hardcore, uh, gory stuff, you know. But I mean, it is what it is, right? You know, you know that going in. So, you know, um, and and again, I, I think because of um, the way it's shot and the, the cinematography. Um, as weird as it sounds, it's, it's going to look beautiful, mm -hmm. which sounds very strange and ironic, but it will. Mm, yeah. I remember I asked, uh, we had a conversation one day on set, and, and I said he had to do some pretty gnarly stuff the day before, and I said, so how do you, how do, how do you feel about this? I mean, is this weird, is, like, does it mess with you, you know, having to be this guy? Because Jacob Goodnight's pretty hardcore, and uh, he's like, oh, you know, all right. And then the next day, <laughs> he's like, remember when you asked me yesterday? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. You know, it was kind of, I could see it, you know. I could see him sort of sitting there, like, having all of this and kind of holding it all in. But it's got to be hard to play somebody that's, that's that, you know, been that tortured and traumatized and having to act out. And yeah, I guess. Lot. I mean, see, you know? You know? You know? You were very nice about it. Anytime you're throwing me around, yeah, after nice. you cut and you'd be like, yeah. you okay? You good? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really push the envelope in violence this time? Uh, there's a lot of violent stuff out there, so I can't say that you, you know, push the envelope. Yeah. Um, Compared I mean, to the other? No, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys D think? Different style kills. Because in the first one, they were, they, were, they, were, they were all sort of similar, but this one, each death is very specific and very different. different. Types of death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's there's the blood and the gore, and and uh, it's always, it's. I mean, for me, it's neat to watch because you know you're sitting there doing. Oh, so that's how they do that kind of a death. Yeah, that's neat. And you're seeing it even from yeah. you know. An yeah, for me too. Like to see yeah. you know to be a neophyte at this and sort of see the movie magic is. It, it, it's pretty neat. It really is, you know. And that's another thing about the, tw the twins. You know, they were talking about, uh, you know, how they uh, they could 
they could remove someone's eye for under five hundred dollars or something like that. <laughs> Using camera angles. Okay. okay, I guess that's a cool skill to have. Uh, but yeah, you know, just to, to be able to see and and you know, movie magic and and of course it's amazing sometimes is just camera angles and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It's nothing really huge, but when you're doing it, it's it's one thing. And back to your point of, um, you know, okay, is this uncomfortable? Well, no, because I'm just doing this, right? Mm -hmm. But when you actually see it put all together and, and the CGI and all that stuff is integrated into it, it looks completely different than what you've done, maybe. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. Right, thank uh, you for we got to wrap it up and bring your you guys over to the other room. Okay. Thank you for your time. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.